time for Nerdgasm. Hey, what's up guys? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles. And I wanted to come at you with this update video on what is going on in my life with the channel and the future of the channel. Now, some of this stuff you might already know about if you follow me on social media, but the chances are that there's quite a few out there that this is gonna come as a big surprise to, or even a shock, some of the things that I'm about to say. All right, let's start off with the elephant in the room here, and that is Tech Talk. The, the podcast that I do with Jay's Two Cents every Thursday at 5 p.m. is coming to an end. Well, I shouldn't say end. I'm saying it's going on hiatus because who knows? It may come back in the future. We don't know when the last episode's gonna be. We are still shooting today's episode. I don't even know if there's gonna be another episode next week, but we'll find out from Jay himself on the show tonight. But guys, it has been an absolute pleasure to work with Jay and be a co-host on his creation, which was Tech Talk. Now, a lot of you guys have asked on social media, why don't I just take over Tech Talk? Well, it's simple. Jay created Tech Talk. Jay hosted Tech Talk long before I was ever a co-host, guys. Jay invited me on the show because I just created a good banter and we had a lot of fun with it because we are exceptionally good friends, dare I say even family at this point. Even though Tech Talk is coming to an end, our friendship certainly isn't. As a matter of fact, I have plans to go down to California to hang out with them and get into some shenanigans. Who knows if any of that will actually make it onto camera or not, but I just want you guys to know, do not beat up Jay for killing Tech Talk. Tech Talk was something that we both talked about and we both agreed that it's probably a good idea to let go. And I'm gonna tell you why from my perspective. I've been kind of latching onto Tech Talk as the stable element in my life. Every week I've been jumping on that show uh, as, as much as humanly possible. And I've been neglecting a lot of things with my own channel and with my own audience because I enjoyed just having that getaway with Jay. And it became, uh, almost unhealthy to a point how much I relied on that show to just have some kind of a release mentally. And the truth is I should be doing my own live streaming endeavors. I should be building my own schedule. I should be, I should be doing a lot of things that I'm not doing. And Tech Talk was one of those things that I used as an excuse to kind of not do those things. So even though Tech Talk is going away, it's going to be replaced by my own weekly podcast. I can't tell you what it's called yet because I'm still thinking about certain aspects of it, but don't worry, there's still gonna be a slot in the week where I come at you guys. And I may or may not have guests on the show. I haven't really decided yet. Another big change in my life is that I've started live streaming on Twitch over at Twitch TV forward slash Barnacles. And I'm going to have a streaming schedule set up in the next week. And you guys should be able to see that schedule down in the video description or over on Twitch TV forward slash Barnacles. And it'll tell you guys when to expect me online and what I'll be streaming. Some of the streams are gonna be gaming and having some fun with that. Other streams are just gonna be me talking, me educating, me playing around things that I want to do and share with you guys. I'm gonna tell you, this last weekend, I went down to PDX land in Portland, Oregon, and I had the most amazing time I've ever had at any of the PDX lands in the past. I literally planted my ass, played games, did like five live streams over the three days that I was there, and I had an amazing time. Now, I'm gonna tell you why it was so different this time than the previous times, and it's actually probably gonna surprise you. So you guys know that I've been going through a lot of crap over the last couple of months with depression and exhaustion. I've literally been waking up every morning feeling like I didn't sleep. I wake up probably 10 or 12 times during the night to go and urinate. I literally thought that I had a bad medical problem with myself, but then I went and got tested for my blood sugar because I thought I might've had diabetes. My blood sugar is bang on. My physical results say that I'm healthy as an ox and I could not figure out what the hell is wrong with me until this weekend when I went down to PDX land, I ended up staying at a different hotel because the normal hotel that I stay at is booked. So I went to another hotel and the lady behind the counter asked me if what kind of bed I wanted, whether I wanted a conventional bed or a sleep number bed. Now I've heard of sleep number beds before, but I've never slept on one. So I was like, yeah, I wanna try the sleep number. Go ahead and give that to me. Guys, I am glad that I made that decision because that night, I went to sleep in that room and for the first time and I wanna say over a year, I didn't wake up. My head hit the pillow, I slept for six hours and at the end of six hours I woke up and I felt refreshed. I didn't feel fatigued, I didn't feel like I needed to run and get coffee, I literally felt amazing and if you guys go back and watch the live streams uh, from that time period, you'll see that I'm actually pretty amped up, I'm pretty energetic and I'm pretty on the ball. And because of that, I had fun gaming, I had fun socializing, everything else came nice because I wasn't so freaking exhausted. Now I thought it might just be a fluke because I inflated the bed down to some ungodly pressure where it was like 30 PSI or something, or sleep number 30. Basically if I sat up, my ass would touch the wood under the bed, that's how deflated it was. So I went ahead and did it again. That night I went to sleep at around 2 a.m. after the land party, 
I didn't even feel that tired. I mean, you, normally I'm like by by nine o'clock at night, I'm like holding my eyes open. So I go down, lay in the bed. Boom. Six hours later, like clockwork, my eyes open. I didn't wake up again during the night. Did, didn't wake up even to like open my eyes and like look around. I was just completely like beside myself at how I slept through the night. And I woke up again and I was energetic. I had breakfast with my buddy who was with me, Rob Darth Tigger. And we went over to the event. We started live streaming, having a good old time. I didn't feel like I was dragging my ass. So now fast forward to when I come home. That Sunday night, I come home. I climb into my bed. I wake up five times during the night to go to the bathroom. I wake up in the morning. My bones hurt. For the first time ever when I slept at the hotel, the Radisson in Portland, I... I woke up, I had no back pain. I don't even know what that's like, guys. I have to take pain medication for my back every day. And after sleeping two nights in that bed, I had no back pain for like an entire day. It felt amazing. But one night back in my bed when I get home, I wake up. I can't open my eyes. I go back to sleep and I sleep until like noon on Monday. I wake up, drag my ass, and I will be honest, I have struggled every night since I've got back, even last night. And I've tried putting extra padding on the bed to make it softer, but then it just gets too hot. It just didn't work. So what I ended up doing is something that I normally wouldn't do. And that is I went to the mall. I walked into the sleep number place. I laid on their I-8 and their I-10 bed, went through all the settings. I had my wife with me too. Uh, did the adjustable base thing. And I walk up the counter and they're basically like, yeah, this bed's $10,000. Yeah, you heard that right. $10,000. This is the price of a car, not a bed. And because I was so impressed with the sleep that I got while I was down there, I didn't even argue. I said, yes, yes, let's do it. And I signed up and I did their financing thing um, so that I can kind of pay it off over time. And uh, and it, I've never spent that much money before on a single thing other than like a car. It, 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 it's still kind of blowing my mind how, how okay I am with spending that amount of money that honestly, I don't really have to spend. But it's because I think I found the source of my fatigue, guys. And I think it's literally my bed is killing me. Not only my bed, I tried sleeping in my son's bed, I tried sleeping on the couch, I tried sleeping on the floor. All of them have massive problems with me waking up multiple times during the night and in pain. Only when I slept in this damn sleep number, almost completely deflated, did, did I wake up feeling good and no pain and actually have some level of energy. And guys, it was amazing. I mean, honestly, I, I know some people that hate sleep number beds and think that they're garbage. As a matter of fact, my friend uh, Adam, Kevlar Condom, uh, he had an I-8 and he sent it back because he said he absolutely couldn't stand it. But I can't explain it to you guys. My back wants basically an almost fully inflated mattress on an adjustable base to feel absolutely perfect. And I didn't care how much money it took. I was going to do it. So that bed will arrive in, I believe, five days. It'll be, I'm, I'm not sure, it'll be here on the 28th. And I've never looked forward to something so much in my life. Is, is getting back that experience that I had this weekend. I'm, I'm serious, guys. It felt so good. I wanted to drive all the way back down to Portland and just go to the hotel again because I came back and within two days, I was completely exhausted. It felt like crap again. Even right now, I am pretty tired, guys. I drank uh, a Balls Energy drink. I took my freaking Adderall for ADHD and I still legitimately feel tired. And I didn't feel tired at all that after that first night down at PDX land. So anyways, I want you guys to know, I don't know if I'm going to do a review of the bed or not. I don't have any kind of affiliation with sleep number. I literally paid full price. I didn't even get so much as a coupon from them. Uh, and, and I was happy to do it because it's the only time I've ever slept that well in the last year. And I think it has a lot to do with my weight gain, but what I need to do is I need to sleep comfortably so that I have the energy to expend to help me lose the weight. If that makes sense. Now, that also moves us on to the diet. You guys have been talking to me about my diet. Some of you guys say I look a lot better. Some of you guys say I look a lot worse. The truth is I fluctuated down 20 pounds, back up 20 pounds, and then back down five pounds again. I've been all over the place with the diet. Currently, I am not on the diet because I was getting so tired and so exhausted. This sugar and caffeine was like the only thing that was keeping me going. But now that I know that when this bed arrives, I'm actually gonna get some good quality sleep and I'm gonna start getting some energy back, I'm gonna take another run at the diet. But I'm not gonna advertise it publicly because one thing I've noticed is a lot of people support me in the diet and a lot of people support me in what I do. And I get, I've probably gotten 300 emails from people saying they've lost between 40 and 60 pounds doing the My Fitness Pal calorie tracking along with me. And part of me feels bad that I didn't, that I wasn't as successful, but I am so happy that I enabled those people to be successful where I failed. 
But the one thing that, that I couldn't stand was all the hate that was coming my way. Anytime I posted a picture of something I liked or a beverage I was drinking, everybody was hassling me. And I understand, guys. I understand. I said I was going on a diet. You guys were holding me accountable. That's what I said to do. But the truth is that turned into almost like a level of bullying that I couldn't handle. And I started just getting mean. I started getting toxic. Just ask Jay. I was getting... I was getting pretty out there and it was and it was a combination of fatigue and constantly being attacked for something that I felt powerless to do anything about. So this time around, I'm going to focus on the health thing. Uh, I'm going to contact Obese to Beast, my buddy John Gloud, and, and get him back involved in my life. But I'm going to do that on the sideline. I'm going to focus the YouTube channel on technology, unboxings, racing simulators, virtual reality, 3D printing, all of the stuff that you guys love and I love to produce. And I'm gonna go ahead and keep the physical health stuff on the side. Now I'll probably mention it in some vlogs here and there and give you guys some progress updates on social media. But again, I don't want that to become the focus of this channel. Also, no more depression videos, okay? I'm done I'm done creating videos when I'm at my lowest showing you guys how freaking vulnerable I am because of course, every last one of you little trolls out there in internet land like to come over and kick me square in the dick when I'm having my worst possible day. And in December, that led to something that could have been very, very bad that I'm very glad that didn't happen. So I'm not gonna allow those things to happen again. I am just gonna focus on creating excellent content for you guys. I'm gonna focus on my own personal and mental health because guys, physical health is nothing without mental health. I know people that have run every day of their life and have been in the best health in the world, but they were so depressed they still dropped dead. I've known people that have been fat for most of their life, but completely happy, laughing, and just having a great old time, and they're healthy as can be. I'm not saying that being overweight is healthy. I'm not saying being underweight is healthy. I'm not even saying being normal weight is healthy. People need to acknowledge there is a mental component there. Now, like I was saying before, I'm getting back into live streaming over on Twitch. So guys, please check that out. I'm gonna, I had a lot of fun. You guys have no idea. I even went and figured out how to do all the little on-screen things for like donations and messages and, and the little bits cup thing. And I'm integrating all that stuff so that I can be more interactive with the audience moving forward. And I'm setting up everything behind me here so that I can constantly keep an eye on chat. I even have a robotic arm here from Haddington Dynamics. Go check out that video that I'm gonna use as my cameraman to dynamically move camera around during the live stream when I'm gaming and I can control it all with my feet using something called a stinky board. Lots of really cool content coming on the channel, guys. You, you just, you have no idea. It's so piled up that I don't even know where to start most days. But I feel like this video is just a good opportunity for me to tell you guys what's going on, let you know that I found a solution to my fatigue problem. It's just a matter of days before it gets here. And you guys have no idea. I can't wait. And we're gonna have a lot of fun together. And if you guys still, after watching this, feel inclined to go down in the comments section and braid me for failing my diet and tell me that I'm a fatty and I'm gonna die and my son's gonna, my son's gonna live without a father and I'm just a fat piece of shit, you go right ahead. Because I talked to my buddy over at Google and every comment that you guys leave down below, good, bad, or otherwise, counts towards engagement. And engagement is good for business because that engagement boosts me higher up in the search rankings so more people find my video. Also, you go right ahead and hit that dislike button because you know what? If you look at the database, and I used to be a database architect, so I know this, guys. The database, likes and dislikes are just added together. They're literally aggregated together in the queries because they count as engagement. Number of likes plus number of dislikes equal the number of people and the percentage of the views that engage the video. YouTube wants people to watch videos that get engaged and have higher engagement percentage. So you hit that dislike button, you're helping me. You don't hit that dislike button, you're technically not helping me, but I guess you'd kind of be getting your point across in the opposite direction. But I know that you're gonna wanna hit that dislike button if you're an asshole. Now the rest of you guys that are awesome and support what I do and support your fellow YouTube community, please take the time to leave a comment. Please take the time to hit that like button. Do not be the silent minority. When you guys engage the video, you help us get out to a larger audience and you help validate what we do. So guys, if it isn't too much trouble, please hit that like button and please leave a comment. And the comment can even be, Jerry, I love what you do. Or Jerry, why do you always wear pajama pants? That seems to be a really popular comment. Now guys, I'm gonna be honest with you here. The reason I wear pajama pants is because they're comfortable. I love wearing comfortable clothing. And it just so happens that Barnacle's Nerdgasm LLC requires that you wear sweatpants to work here. It's actually a part of the dress code. So technically this is a uniform. 
So guys, I hope you enjoyed this really quick update. I've got some more videos coming, uh, lots of product reviews, including the AVIO capture device, um, some camera stuff, some audio stuff. Uh, gonna be doing some more stuff with the robotic arm. I also have the Ultimaker V3 that I'm gonna be reviewing pretty soon. I also have DJI's uh, latest drone that folds up. Uh, that's gonna be a blast to go and review. And today, Inventables just sent me a Carvey, which is their, their more self-contained and cleaner CNC machine that I'm gonna use to make some things that if you have ADHD or think you have ADHD, you're gonna enjoy what I'm gonna be making on that thing. All right, guys, well, I'm gonna wrap it up because I have to get ready for Tech Talk. We don't know if it's gonna be the last episode or not. Hopefully it isn't, but it might be. So prepare yourself and make sure you guys don't miss it. It's on at 5 p.m. Pacific time over on Jay's Two Cents channel. And guys, please, no matter what you do, do not go and, and yell at Jay on Twitter, on social media, that he's a bad person for ending Tech Talk. I agreed it was a good idea too. And, and try not to go, oh, I'm unsubbing from you because I only subbed you because of Barnacles or, or vice versa with me. Guys, it's, it's a cool community. All of us YouTubers, for the most part, all like each other and respect each other and what we do. And Jay and I, out off the camera, dude, we're like family. We've talked about our deepest, darkest secrets, our deepest insecurities. The guy is seriously my rock, regardless of whether you guys see it online or not. So please treat him with respect and please, above all, congratulate him on his success, his stuff he's doing with Terry Crews, his risks he's taking creating a studio and actually hiring employees and incorporating. Jay is honestly my idol for, for doing what he needs to to be successful. A lot of what I do here is kind of willy-nilly. A lot of the stuff that I've done that have made my channel famous has been just kind of just kind of out there sharing my life with you guys. And, and I've been lucky enough to have that be successful enough. But I, I am hugely inspired by people like Jay and people like Bob Claggett and people like Bill Duran and those people that, that honestly go out and do the work to build their channels, take the risks, reinvest, build, take the risks, reinvest and build. Because if you don't take any risks, there's absolutely no rewards. And if you guys watched my life story about how I went from poverty to being a senior software development engineer at Microsoft, you guys will know what I'm talking about. All right, I'm gonna wrap it up. Until next time, guys. And don't worry, there's always gonna be a next time.